This is my beloved Athern Blue Box C44-9, which I converted to DCC a couple of months ago. But you know what would be better than this? Two C44-9s converted to DCC. Hello YouTubes. Now, I know these locos look exactly the same, but they're completely different. This one says 4641, and this one says 4642. Now, they're both Athern Blue Box, and they're a wee bit more complicated to convert to DCC, but I've already done this one, so I should know what I'm doing with this one. Let's get stuck in. Picked this up from a train show a couple of months back, and as you can see, it's got the missing smokestack and horn sand fillers but it came in a box with bits so we'll install them at a later date today we are installing the decoder right usual athern blue box it's got the four clips holding the shell on some of them will get little pins at the side but this one's got the four clips i've already pre-wriggled pre this loose save a bit of time Move that to the side. I will be installing LEDs front and back, but for now, I just want the decoder installed. The inside of the local looks really nice. Side bit just fell off. That just gets stuck on there. I'll glue that on later. Let's move it out of the way. Do your friend want to come off as well? Just to save us losing that or breaking that further down the line. Come okay, on. Because there is breakable bits there, like that little bell. Nope, he wants to stay on. Doesn't matter, doesn't need to come off. So, all looks nice and clean. If you're new to Athern Blue Box decoderizing, we need to get the motor off because at the moment the motor is grounded to the chassis through little prongs that stick out the bottom of the motor. We need to flatten them or swap them over with this plate. Don't worry, we'll get to it. But as you can see, there's no wires. It's a great design, but it just makes it a little bit harder to convert to DCC. So I'm going to remove the front and rear trucks, front and rear trucks, remove this bar here. Won't be using that either. And I will be removing the motor. It sits in little motor mounts, little white things. You can see one there, one there. They stick through those little holes there. They look in good condition, but if they break, I do have replacements, thanks to Greg Dean, who sent me a pack of them. Okay, let's dismantle. Everyone get your little parts tray. I do love how easy these are to dismantle. So you've got a little clip here that holds the truck upwards, and it rests on those little silver bars there. It's usually a good idea to get to the clip from the underside, so if there's a space through there, right up to there, clip that, keep your finger over the top so it doesn't go doing across the floor. Clip off, worm gear off, drive shaft out, truck drops down, truck side falls off apparently. Not to worry, I was going to take these off anyway and lubricate and clean everything. It's really not that dirty. It's really great condition. Right, that's one down. Same for the other side. Screwdriver through a gap if you can find one. Not sure if I'm going to have the same luck in this side, unfortunately. Come on, give it. Yeah, there we go. You see that? Get it up through there, in there, over the clip. Let's get this light thing out of the way here. It just clips on like so. Clip it like that, take that off. We're not going to be using that either. Take that clip off, worm gear out. Watch you don't lose, there's a little thrust washer in there, don't lose that. Put him over there, drive shaft out. Truck removed. Lovely. And we will just remove this for now. Because I'll be installing the LEDs to the body rather than to this. However, I am going to be using this plate here to solder on the ground wire for the decoder. We'll get to that soon. 
Okay, next step, remove the motor. Motor is held in place by two white, kind of flexible plastic mounts and they poke through the bottom of the chassis, as you can see down there. Now I've seen people stabbing these with screwdrivers, Phillips or straight screwdrivers like that. I'm going to try using more of a sort of Allen key tool so that we've got a sort of flat, surf, flat surface pushing down. Older ones you can maybe wiggle this and get them out. I don't want to break these though because they do look in good condition. Right, let's see if we can push this out. This one and this one is connected and that one and that one's connected. I don't know why there's sellotape at the bottom of this, that's weird. Anyway, let's see if we can get this out without breaking it. Just because I've got new ones doesn't mean I have to break the old ones, right? Because everything costs money to replace. Oh, these are tight. And I've got little holes in my hand already from pushing against that. Come on, don't be a wuss. Come out. Is tight. Let me find something. I'm just not able to push hard against that because you know injuries. Let me see if I can find someone to put over that. Here we go. Bit of insulating tape. Protect my poor little soft hands. Let's try again. go so yeah pain is a bit of a a force stopper anyway I've got these out perfect condition so we can remove them don't worry these are universal they can go either way around and they just slide on there okay moving on to the next step we need to either Flatten those little prongs. You see those little prongs? They make contact with that little strip down there. Which we don't want to happen anymore because we want to isolate this motor completely from the frame. So that's what we're doing next. Now I mentioned there was two ways we can do this. We can either flatten those little prongs down or we could actually snip them off. So that's three ways then. Because the third way, which I prefer, is remove that strip here swap it with this one which is already flat and then there's no danger of these little prongs working their way down to hit that bar I'll tell you what we'll do first i'm going to cut a little bit of insulating tape since i've got it here anyway and just lay a little strip across that section there just to make absolute sure that it's not going to make contact with the chassis You can't just put a whole flat section there because you need to leave room for the the mounts. So cut a bit of that. Fill that gap there. Like so. That's that bit done. Let's go on with this. I'm going with the option of swapping that plate with that plate. It's just the way I prefer to do it. Now, before you immediately rip these off, bear in mind that underneath that plate right there and that plate is where your little brushes live. So be careful when you, you take them off. You'll also notice there's a different way that this clips over. There's a sort of, it kind of looks like a question mark there. Whereas the other side is just a, a hook round, they have to go on that way, okay? And it also helps with putting them back on. So clip it off that side, keep your finger over there so the spring doesn't go across the room. Remove this. There's your little spring. And your little brush. Sometimes it comes out. These ones in the atherms, or some of the atherms, have got a little slot in them to make them easy to rotate into position if you have to. Look at the size of that. That's not seen a lot of action. Put that somewhere safe for now. And the other side, exactly the same. Unclip it there, keep your finger over the top. Remove that. 
spring seems to be stuck to it. And the brush, also huge, excellent. I love it when the brushes are that size. Now, before I swap them over, I want to go through the decoder itself, just in case you're new to this, okay? I'm using a very basic decoder, TCS. It's not a top brand or anything, and this actually came out of a different loco. And if I forget, this one's address for the loco is 6060. Yes, it came out of a, a steam train. <laughs> now, it is purely for motor function and lights. So forward, back, speed, accelerate, decelerate, lights, front, back. No sound, anything like that. There are some wires that will not be used. They generally come with a generic wiring harness. Okay, this is a eight pin, I believe. The two outside ones, the purple, won't be getting used. And the other outside one, the green, also will not be getting used. And they've already been cut down. Let's go through the other wires. We've got black on that side and red. Red will be picking up power from the right hand rail, black will be picking up power from the left hand rail. So that's those two accounted for. Grey wire goes to the negative of the motor, orange wire goes to the positive of the motor, so it's no longer picking up power from the chassis. Yellow wire is the, is the rear light negative, white is the front light negative, and blue is the common positive, which goes to the positives of both the front and the rear. And that's all your wires, fairly basic. I was kind of intimidated when I started doing these, but now I've done a few, it's fairly basic and they all seem to do the same color wise. So let's get back to the motor itself and I'll show you one of the most important, well, one of an important thing we have to do before we reassemble the motor, which is to do with this gray negative wire to the motor, okay? Because we will no longer be using the chassis as the ground, we need to be able to connect that grey wire I was talking about to a ground of the motor, which is the lower one right there. Now I've already said we're going to be swapping over these little brass or copper strips. And once we hook that over that way, Obviously, it will have the brush and spring in it, but just for talking's sake, if we now attach that to the bottom and stick it back onto the chassis, we've got no access to the underside. So before we attach this one, I am going to solder a little grey wire right there in preparation. So the, so the grey wire will get soldered onto the edge. I don't want it on the bottom because then it will be hitting off the bottom of the chassis. Okay, so solder there, a little bit of grey wire which is going to attach to the grey wire of the decoder. Let me heat up the soldering iron. Let's get this little dude in a little clamp. Let's see how am I going to do this that way. Yep, that should do it. That'll be going like that. Okay. Always worthwhile preparing your movements before you start. Talking of which, you need to find a little bit of grey wire. It doesn't have to be grey as long as it connects to the grey on the decoder. That's all that matters. I'm not, going to, I'm not going to strip the top bit at the moment. I just want to be able to connect that to that. So a bit of flux on there. bit of flux on there, bit of solder on the old iron, turn this wire first if I can pick it up, get a wee bit of solder in here as well, doesn't need a huge amount. Get this connected. Like so. We're done with that section. Right, moving on. Now we can put our 
brushes and springs back on and get our little clips back on. So, one brush in there, slot side at the top. And I think the reason they have these little slots on the brushes is just so that you can rotate these a little bit because you do have a sort of semicircle happening there as it runs. I mean, it should find its own way, but uh, it's a nice little feature. You basically poke, poke your screwdriver down there and rotate it until you're happy. As I say, it will find its home. Okay, now we can get our spring in. And this is the bottom clip. You can tell that by the mounts or the mounting bracket areas. So that's the one we just done. Oh, let's just wipe off that flux that I've left there. They are quite corrosive. Might be worth actually dipping that in some alcohol. Let's do that. I don't want I don't want rust appearing or corrosion down there. And flux can be quite corrosive. So better safe than sorry. Might as well clean up our little soldered area also. Right, now we can get it together. The spring fell out. Do you see that? Pay attention everyone. Okay, you have to hook the back end in first. So that little hooky bit there goes over the back, comes all the way forward. And you can push that over till it clicks home, like so. So that's the bottom one, and that's going to come up the side, join on to the decoder. Top one, I think I'm going to snip these off, just so they don't poke me in the hand when I'm soldering other stuff. Where's my snips? Let's get in here. Snippy snip. Okay. Straighten that up again so that it makes a nice clippy clip. And we'll get that one back on. Brush in first, rotate if required, like so. This one's the same as the bottom one. You get that sort of hook goes on at the back first. Remember your spring. Reminding myself there. And hook that down and clip it over. Now we do still need to solder something onto this but we can do it anywhere it doesn't have to be up at the end so i'm more likely to solder a blob there and put the wire there so that would be the positive that would be the orange wire that connects to that so the orange coming from the decoder goes to the top and the gray from the decoder goes to the bottom which is why we've added this but for now i think we're actually ready to reinstall this back onto the chassis the hard bit is done So we just need to grab our little motor mounts, slide one in each side. Now, it's important to remember, although I don't think it can go, it can go in the chassis the wrong way, but the commutator faces the, the front, which is where that headlight bracket is. So it goes in that way. And a bit of wiggling and this should pop in. Oh, lovely. I really don't think this loco has seen much action because that went in really nice and it's nice and solid and it's lying nice and flat. Sometimes they're a bit wibbly wobbly. So our motor's back in. We can proceed with the rest of the install. So let's get our trucks back in. Uh, another point to note, if you're wondering, these can actually go that way or that way. And the way to remember which way round, because it is important, because if you get them the wrong way round, it'll go backwards when it's supposed to go forwards. So with the loco 
facing you this way in the front to the left, these little bars here should come over and point to you. So I know that's the right way around, okay. That'll go in there. So let's get our drive shaft in and our worm gear and our little clip over the top. Easy peasy. Okay, the final bit of wiring. Well, there's a few bits of wiring, but it's all in front of us now. Let me talk you through where all the little wires from your decoder end up. So we've already established the gray wire is gonna be connected to that gray wire. The orange wire is gonna be connected to the top or the positive connection to the motor. So I'll be soldering on something Probably right in the middle there. Okay, that's the grey and the orange. But we need to sort out where the pickup comes from. So we have the red. Red will be the right hand side of the track. Which is collecting power from these two little tabs. So we kind of need to connect these two. And then join them onto the red. And the black is the ground for the motor coming in from the track. And that's going to collect its power from this bar here, which is attached to the whole of the chassis, which gets all its power from those three wheels and those three wheels. So, black wire to there, red wire to there and there, but I need to create a long wire going from all the way, all the way from there to there. Let me dig out some red wire. I actually bought a roll of this wire here. It was pretty cheap and you get a lifetime supply. Unfortunately, because it's all wound together, you end up cutting off big sections that you don't need because obviously it's going to be just lying about, flopping about. Anyway, I only want the red wire for this and I want it to go from there to there, roughly. I mean, we, we can trim it down, but better too long than too short. That's what she said. So, let us see. That's going to be long enough. I'm not going to solder that on yet because I actually want to install this on top of the this bar here, which I can't do until I connect the orange to there and the grey to there. I just hope I've got enough height because this is quite bulky. So I might have it hanging off the end just a little bit because as you can see, it's thicker at that side than that side. So I'll maybe just stick it there or there. Let's have a quick look at the shell, see what sort of height we've got. Aha! Right, we've definitely got more height on that section there. So let us go with there and hopefully that will be enough to take up that bulk of the height. You can get little brackets to clip over your motor for this, for this to sit on, but I've found with this type of lo this diesel loco, it's really skinny there. You don't have a lot of width to put a clip on, and then the, 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 the little plate that you make actually raises it even higher, gives you even more trouble. So I'm just gonna stick it on there, I think. Just gotta make sure it's not gonna fill your flywheel. I think we'll be okay like so. Tell you what I'm doing. I'm going to put a bit of double-sided tape right in the middle, stick that on temporarily, and if I get enough height, I'll just stick it there. Because I'd rather it wasn't hanging over the flywheel. Give me a sec. Aha, uh -huh. as you can see, it fits right on the top. Perfect. Okay, let's see if I can get this off again. Ugh. Because this is a relatively unused loco, everything's quite tight, which is good, but it does make it a wee bit trickier to separate. Normally you can just pull these off the bottom, but 
These clips are kind of still fresh. How did I get this off the first time? Uh, maybe did that. Yes. Okay, so that is going to work. And remember, once once your shell's on, this isn't going anywhere. So don't worry too much about the how awesome this tape is. Hmm. Try to figure out where I'm going to solder it now, if I'm going to stick it right in the top. Didn't think about that one, did I? I would rather not have it soldered directly on that that plate there above the brush. Tell you what I'll do. I'm going to solder it on the end, the same I did with the grey. In fact, I'm going to take it off of this to do that. No, I'm not. Don't be ridiculous. Let's just do it. So, we're looking for the orange wire. That's going to go there. It can be pretty short. Let's snap that down there. Strip the end off. bit of flux, a wee bit of tinning, didn't have to do it sitting there and I want to get some in the end here, bit of flux in there, I need a bit more solder, try not to bleed in the toxic fumes We can stick this back on and solder on our orange wire to the top of the motor. We can see what we're doing. So that little orange wire is just going to come around here. Solder on there. Okay. Ugh, all the other wires are wanting in on the action. Okay. Okay, we have our first wire connected to the decoder. While we're here, let's get the grey one attached to the other one. So I need to snip them down a bit because they're way too long. Obviously, before I connect them, I need to get a little bit of heat shrink tubing. Otherwise, they're going to be flopping about creating shorts. Doesn't need to be a huge amount. Just enough. That's still too much. is our grey connected. Get the heat shrink over the top. Yes, I know it looks really fiddly. And it is. You get used to it. It gets easier. Or so I'm told. <laughs> yeah, I'm getting stuck on the wire there. I'll just bend that down a bit. What pain he was. Lovely. So that's our ground wire. Go down to the bottom of the motor, connected to the grey, coming from the decoder. Orange wire, connected to the positive of the motor, coming from the decoder. Only two wires left to do for now, and that is the negative, which is connecting to the chassis via that bar there. Red wire connecting to both of these with this wire here. So let's add some flux to there. 
Oh goodness, that was a lot. Some to there, and some to the wire, or the plate at the front for the ground wire. Talking of which, I'm going to have to extend this black wire because there's no way it's reaching from there to there. No biggie. I'll dig out some black wire similar to this. So let's get some solder on all of these plates. Now your soldering iron does need to be relatively hot compared to the temperature needed for the wires, but for that, to heat that up, you see how that solder just sits on the top? So I usually pump my temperature up to about 400 centigrade, just for this section here. Let's give that a minute to heat up. Okay. I want this right in the middle. Doesn't really matter, but you know. Bit there. Bit at the front. A bit in the rear. That's a lot of blob. Not to worry. Okay, let's sort out this wire. So for now, I'm just going to run the red wire all the way from the front to the back. Obviously, I'll need to snip it in the middle and join on the wire coming or going to the decoder. First things first, let's join this one. Stripper got a bit aggressive there. Oh my goodness, I'm going to have to possibly do this by hand. It just keeps cutting the wire off. Yeah, this is really fine wire. Oh, I can just do it by my fingers. Okay. That's too long now. Other side. Just as well, I've still got a nail. Oh, wait. Dip that in some flux. Give it some tinning. Ready for soldering on. One section there. And the front. Okay. See, I wanted I wanted it long enough to reach, but I didn't want it too long that it was going to fill things up. Because we don't have a lot of room in here, and it wouldn't take much for the shell to push that down. As long as there's enough room for your trucks to rotate without stretching the wire, we're good. And obviously we're going to be cutting this anyway. So, we need to cut this and join it to this. Okay, I've decided I want this wire longer because remember, you've got to cut it and then strip it and then twist it together or, you know, join it. So I actually don't have enough red wire there. But hey, that's why I do these videos. So you can learn by my mistakes, which I very rarely make. <laughs> right. It also doesn't help that I kind of shortened this wire by snipping it when I was trying to strip the insulation off. Heat, heat is hot. <sighs> Molten metal. Okay, so that's obviously way too much, but that's okay because as I say, we're going to strip it here. Oh, not strip it, snip it there. Strip that. Strip that. Join them together. We can tape it all down later anyway. Twist them together for now. Bit of flux. Don't worry, I have thought about the heat shrink thing. We can do that with the next step. For now, I want these together. Yeah, that will work. Trust me. Trust me. Let's get this one stripped down now.
bit of heat shrink now. Now that doesn't need to be quite so long. What I think we'll do is join it like so. And that will leave us enough room. Yes, that'll be fine. So, heat shrink over the single bit of wire. Get my little clip in place. Join these together. Let's clean that up a bit. Get some fresh solder. Oh, goodness. I missed the cleaning part of the cleaning. That's better. Slide our heat shrink over all of them. Shrink it down. Lovely. So as I say, we can we can wrap all that together, put a bit of tape over it to hold it out of the way. I've only got one wire left, and that's the black wire. Which unfortunately is oh just an inch short of that. So let me get a little black bit of black wire and we'll be almost done. I'm gonna snap that back here. Strip that back. Find a bit of black wire. Hmm. So this wire that I got that's really easy to strip it's actually solid core wire so it's pretty good so that'll go from there to there that's a wee bit long actually but let's get this bit on first so remember this is the ground wire coming from the chassis goes over to the black wire going into the decoder. One little piece of heat shrink left. I mean, I've got like a whole box, but uh, you don't need to use every bit of heat shrink from one section. Okay, it's maybe a wee bit long, but we'll deal with that. Yeah, let's just trim that down a little bit. A bit of flux, too much. That solder. And join these together, and we will be. And we will be. That didn't go as planned. Done. Well, almost. Once I get the heat shrink on, then we'll be done. Hmm, not really happy with that connection. Nah, it's fine. It's fine. That's all our main wiring done. Red wire's coming from this side of the rails. That's the front of the local. So right hand side of the rail gets picked up there, goes into the decoder through the red wire. The left hand side of the rail gets picked up through the chassis from all those wheels, goes into the black wire of the decoder. Grey wire goes to the negative at the bottom of the motor. Orange wire goes to the top of the motor. So it should work. Other than the lights, we're good to go. Let's throw it on the track. Make sure it works before we put the shell on and add all the detail. So as I mentioned, this Decoder was set to 6060, so let's go 
60, 60, enter that, speed step, 128, give it some power, hopefully it goes that way. Oh, there it goes. Oh, it's nice and quiet, which is pretty good for a Athern Blue Box. Lovely. Now I'm going to have to do some settings on the power cab just to make it accelerate and slow down a little bit nicer. Yeah, because it kind of comes to a bit of a sudden stop, but not the end of the world. It's all in the settings. Okay, back to the bench just to wrap things up. Now I'm not going to install the LEDs at the moment because I've got quite a lot of other work to do on this and I might as well do that all in a separate video. Plus this video is long enough. All we really need to do is put a bit of tape over the top. I've kept these nice and short so we really don't have much chance of wires fouling anything. But I would like a bit of tape over the top, make sure that's got enough room to swivel. Swivel, black wire looks good. That should be all we need. Grey wire's not going to foul anything there. Should be fine. Make sure the body goes back on. Not catching anything there. Not catching anything there, although that tape's a wee bit annoying. All good, all good. Clip it in. Lovely. Oh, where did I put that bit? Where's it going? And it's lost. Maybe it's in the box. Oh, there it is. Clip you on. I should just glue this while I'm here, but I don't have glue handy. I'm going to get some glue, that's annoying, and then we'll be done. So, to round things off, let's get him on the track, hook him up to his little friend, and probably attach my auto racks for now. Should he go that way? Should maybe go that way. Oh, he doesn't have a coupler at the back. Or the front. Need to add some couplers. And we'll get him round the track for the victory lap. Before you go, please make sure you are still subscribed if you were before. For some reason, YouTube have been unsubscribing people willy-nilly, including myself from other people's channels, so I had to go around all my favourites and make sure I was subscribed, so please do that for me. And I'll see you in the next video, which will probably be soon. I don't know when. Making this up as I go along. Take care. See you soon. Bye for now.